Are you considering Kalkwasser or you already use it? If so, this is the series for you. This video is episode one of the Kalkwasser series. We're going to start off with understanding what Kalkwasser is, and by the end of this series, you'll fully understand that calc life. Calcium hydroxide, or better known as calc, is by far one of the best calcium and alkalinity supplements, hands down. Its proper use was not widespread knowledge, so instead, we kind of put it in the RATO, deemed it dinosaur technology, and it fell off as one would expect. As much as I don't like it though, Calcster has actually helped put it back in front of our faces. Let's spend a minute to understand where calc comes from. Kalkwasser is a German thing first for reef dosing, but it originates from mined limestone that's heated up to 1500 degrees, crushed into dust with some other things done to it, and it's then turned into CaO, which is calcium oxide, and then gone through a process called slacking. It involves taking the calcium oxide powder and mixing it with water with aggressive agitation and heated up to 170 degrees Fahrenheit, essentially a super hot slurry. During this mixing, the calcium oxide bonds with the H2O by dropping off its oxygen and giving it to the H2O. Results in the hydroxide, the OH2 part of the formula. And then the calcium bonds to that, and you get the CaOH2 formula. That process makes it soluble calcium ion with a powerful hydroxide punch, unlike its calcium oxide form. Uh -oh. That was like nine takes. You know, it's interesting stuff, and probably only 1% of you care about that nerd knowledge, but... Please give your boy a like if you just learned something. Now that we know what calc is, how does it work? The chatter in the back room is that calc does not contain carbonates or bicarbonates. That's absolutely true. It does not. How does it work then, you ask? Well, not only does calc go through a process to be made, it also goes through another process when it's added to water. The calcium ion splits off and it does its calcium thing waiting for carbonates to bond to to form calcium carbonate. The hydroxide, however, is looking for dissolved CO2. Without dissolved CO2, the hydroxide cannot create true alkalinity. Look, we all have dissolved CO2 in our tanks, so no matter what, that's an easy fix. It's called calc, baby. Now, before you go ordering your calc from some distributor, just know that there is one brand I would stay away from when using calc to chase pH, and that's Brightwell Calc Plus 2. It's not a bad product at all, but if you use that one, it will jack up your magnesium and strontium for sure. For standard calc dosing to meet alkalinity demand, totally fine. So anybody can use calc really from a day one reefer to a 30 year reefer. My only exception is you better have a pH monitor of some sort and alkalinity monitoring is advised, but it's not necessary. Both parameters can get way out of hand if you're willy nilly about it and careless. Same thing can happen from using simple soda ash too. Our best practice right now is to shut down calc dosing if it hits a pH of 8.8. .8. So how do we dose this? You could put it in your ATO if you please. A standard peristaltic dosing pump and a jug will work. The jug must be tightly sealed though because the CO2 in the air will form carbonates on the top layer of the solution and it'll get all crusty and whatnot. That's that white crust that you see on top of calc jugs. Or you could just get a fancy stir with some crazy programming. Putting it in your ATO is just bad news though, so don't do that. Peristaltic dosing is my go-to and calcsters have their place. My house and my tank is just not that place. Dosing it with a pump is much easier for me, mainly because of the cost and over time, your calc slowly becomes less potent unless you top it off all the time with a stir. Not a bad product though, many people use it, just not me. Now for figuring out how much to dose, hamsesreef.com has an awesome calculator so you can get a baseline of what X amount of calc will do to your tank. Just remember that alkalinity is tied to the dissolved CO2 in the water, so the calculator will just get you really close. I actually got to see what different CO2 levels would do to a tank dosed with calcwasser. When my tank was inside the CO2 filled house, the alkalinity would explode with the tiniest amount of dosing. Move that same setup to the garage where the CO2 is at natural levels, and now I can dose much more calc. That's good because I'm using it to push pH first instead of be my main alkalinity supplement. You can actually use calc to drive pH, be an alkalinity supplement, or do both. That explanation calls for another video though. Maybe I'll do that so we can see how calc can be added to any system that already has a means of dosing. Is pushing the limits of pH a good idea? I always say yes, but it really depends on what you want. I want a tank that grows corals fast and healthy. That speaks to me. A tank you don't trim for three years might speak to you. If you can hit a pH of 8.2 without doing anything, then I say leave it alone. But if you're under 8.0 at night, then I tell you to fix that shit right now. The big problem with people who struggle with pH are going to have that scary alkalinity spike effect. There is so much dissolved CO2 in the water that when the calc gets dosed, the alkalinity will skyrocket. Anybody remember when Chris Meckley talked about his alkalinity exploding from calc dosing at night? He had a high dissolved CO2 in the water, plain and simple. I have a low dissolved CO2 tank, so I can throw so much calc at my little three gallon, it'll absolutely scare you. We check the alkalinity later, and it's barely moved. In my case, I get more pH boost than alkalinity boost, and that's because the lower amount of CO2. 
If you have a CO2 scrubber on your skimmer, you can actually use that to your benefit by removing CO2 from the water and allowing the calc to boost your pH more than it boosts your alkalinity. When your alkalinity can't stay somewhat stable, you actually back off the CO2 scrubbing, allowing more CO2 to enter into your tank, and that will create more alkalinity in the system. I fucking love science, man. Now, how do I specifically dose it? Peristaltic pump with an RO line going to the jug. That's it. Nothing special and no crazy programmer for being apex controlled. We started with a set amount of dosing during lights off based off my 24-hour DKH consumption and hopped on Hansa's.com, sorry, Hansa's Reef, Dot com calculator, but I quickly had to add some in the day because my alkalinity is basically just going up, going up, going up, and then once the lights turn on, boom, she just plummets, and that's no good. Before I go, I'll give you my quick pros and cons. It's beginner and advanced friendly, 100%. It's cheap, it's readily available, it's a known additive that is not something just brand new on the market. You get the pH boost from it, and it's two-in-one dosing. The bad bad would be it could nuke your tank for sure. The solution goes bad if it's not properly sealed. Calc stirs are expensive and it's a dangerous chemical. And with taking all that into mind, there's more pros than there are cons. There really are. This is where we will end our calc discussion today. If you enjoyed this content and would like to see more, don't forget to subscribe and check out my Instagram page.